guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about box and whisker plots. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So a box and whisker plot typically looks like the one you see on the screen. I would like to go ahead and label the different points of a box and whisker plot. So this first dot right here represents the lowest score in the numbers that are given to us. This next dot right here represents the first quartile. We will get more into this in a minute. This next dot here represents the median of the range of numbers that are given to us. The fourth dot here represents the third quartile. And this final dot up here represents the highest score. Let's go ahead and try to solve some problems now. Look at all of the numbers that are on the screen. These are the numbers that are given to us. In our problem, we are told to draw a box and whisker plot for this distribution. So let's first draw a number line. The number line is where we are going to graph our box and whisker plot. However, we need to have it there so we know where to draw our dots. So since our first number is in the low 60s, we will have our number line start at the number 60 and end at the number 100. Okay, now that we've drawn our number line, the first thing that we need to do is identify the lowest score. This, remember, is the first dot on our box and whisker plot. Our lowest score in the numbers that are given to us is 64. So we're going to put our first dot here at 64. The next easiest dot to do is the final one at the very top. This one represents the highest score. Our highest score is 100, so we're going to put our highest dot up there. Now remember that our other three dots are the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. The median of the lower half of the data is called the first quartile, and the median of the upper half of the data is called the third quartile. This will make more sense as we solve our problem. But first, let's find the median. So in order to find the median, we need to find the middle number out of all of these numbers. In the numbers that are given to us, there are 17 numbers, which means the middle number is going to be the ninth number, counting forwards or backwards. So our ninth counting score from either end is 85. So that means that our third dot, which is our median, is going to be at 85. Now in order to find the first quartile, we need to take all of the lower range of numbers, which is from 64 all the way to 85, including the median, and find the median of this range right here. And in order to find the median of the upper half of the data, which is the third quartile, we are going to find the middle number from our last number, which is 100, and our median number, which is 85. So with nine scores, including the median, in the lower half of the distribution, the first quartile is the fifth score, counting from the low end. So if we count five numbers in, the fifth number is 73. So 73 is going to be our first quartile. Now for the upper half of the distribution with nine scores, including the median, the third quartile is going to be the fifth score counting from the high end. So if we count five numbers back, our number is 92. So now that we have all of our dots placed, we, all what we simply left to do is draw the box and the whiskers. So from the lowest number to the first quartile, there is a whisker. Then we're going to draw a box from the first quartile all the way to the third quartile. There's going to be another line at the median. However, we do not draw connecting lines between the first quartile, median, and the third quartile. Then finally, we are going to draw a whisker from the third quartile to the highest score. And this is what a box and whisker plot would look like for this set of numbers. In a box and whisker plot, the box will enclose the middle half of the distribution and the whiskers will indicate the spread of data throughout the lowest and highest fourths of the dimension of the distribution. The distance between these two extreme points represents the range of the distribution. Let's go ahead and try drawing one more box and whisker plot. Here are our numbers. So the first thing that we need to do is draw out our number line. Remember that our number line is going to start from approximately where the lowest number is and go all the way up to the highest number. So our lowest number that is given to us is 2, which means we can have our number line starting at the beginning, or 0. Our highest number is closest to the number 50, so we're going to have our number line go all the way up to 50. 
So the first thing that we need to do is find out where our lowest number is. This is where our first dot goes. Our lowest number is the number 2, so our first dot is going to go approximately here. Next, we find our highest number, which is 47. So our next dot is going to go approximately here. Now for our middle dot, we are going to find the median. There are 21 numbers given to us, which means the median is going to be the 11th number from the beginning or from the end. If we count 11 numbers in, we find that our median is 25. So we're going to put our next dot here at 25. Now all that is left is to find the first quartile and the third quartile point. Remember that the median of the lower half of the data is called the first quartile and the median of the upper half of the data is called the third quartile. So our lower quartile includes the numbers from 2 all the way to 25 and our upper quartile includes the number from 25 all the way to 47. So the first thing we need to do is find the median from the number 2 to 25. There are 11 numbers, which means that the median is going to be the sixth number in. This number is 14. So we know that our first quartile number is going to be at point 14. Now for our third quartile number, we are going to count another six numbers in, but this time from the top. This number is 34, so we know that our third quartile range is 34. Now all that is left is to draw the box and the whiskers. So remember that we have a whisker here and a whisker here. However, we have a box over these three middle numbers. So this is what a box and whisker plot would look like for this distribution. Now, by analyzing the box and whisker plots for different distributions, you can easily make comparisons between them. Let's go ahead and try to make comparisons between these three different box and whisker plots. These box and whisker plots represent different classes who took the same test. The scores of the student's test are shown in these box and whisker plots. Let's go ahead and analyze these box and whisker plots so that we can answer these questions. The first question asks, which class has the highest median? Remember that the median is the number that is in the middle of the range and is also the dot that is in the middle of the box. So out of these three classes, which class has the highest median? This would be class number two because their median, which is the dot represented here, is higher than the medians of the other two classes. And the next question asks, which class has the smallest range? So in order to find the range, you're going to take the top number, which would be the number represented here, and you're going to subtract it by the bottom number. The difference is equivalent to the range. Let's go ahead and do this. So the top number here is 88. And the bottom number here is 60. 88 minus 60 equals 28. So the range for class number one is 28. The range for class number two is this. The highest number, which is right here, is 92. So we're going to write 92 and then subtract it by the lowest number, which is 66. 92 minus 66 equals 26. So this is the range for class number two. Now for class number three, the highest score is 100. And the lowest score is 60. 100 minus 60 equals 40. So the range for class number three is 40. So back to our question, which asks, which class has the smallest range? Out of these three numbers, the number 26 is the smallest. So class number two would have the smallest range. Now, for our next question, let's see which, for which class are the scores in the middle half closest together. So, this time we are still finding the range. However, we are just finding the range between the first quartile and the third quartile. These are also known as the middle half. So, for class number one, our third quartile number is 80. And our first quartile number is 68. 80 minus 68 equals 12. So class number one has a middle range of 12. For class number two, our third quartile number is 89. And our first quartile number is 80. 89 minus 80 equals nine. So class number two has a middle half range of nine. Now for our final class, class number three. Our third quartile number is 89 as well. And our first quartile number is 68. 89 minus 68 equals 21. 
So now, back to our question, we need to find for which class are the scores in the middle half closest together. This would mean that the range is the smallest. It ranges over the least amount of numbers. The answer to this question is class number two, since it has the middle range of nine, which is the smallest number. Thank you so much for watching this video about box and whisker plots. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below if you haven't already. Thanks again so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!